You can't have a top 10 kung fu movie list without mentioning 36 Chambers of the Shaolin. Oh, yeah, the Wu-Tang album. The I've got Wu-Tang that. The Wu-Tang album, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe I never actually had that, so you might know more about that than I do. Uh, well, you know, Wu-Tang were inspired by a lot of kung fu movies. Uh, 36 Chambers. 36 Chambers. They used to watch them in Times Square. Back in the 70s or 80s, there was some CD theater that served, showed like B-movies and Kung Fu movies. Yeah. Back when New York and Times Square was really sleazy. It really helped to actually <laughs> spread a lot of Kung Fu in New York in the 70s. Like, yeah. Everyone back then like was learning some kind of Kung Fu. There was lots of street fights. It was exact. Too. New York was exactly like it was in that movie, The Last Dragon. Yes, exactly. It was exactly. exactly. That was Harlem. Exactly. <laughs> That's a documentary. <laughs> Um, so 36 Chambers, it's, it's often considered the best Kung Fu movie. And one of the reasons I think it's so interesting is most of the movie is about how the guy trains. Mm. And so, you know, each chamber of the Shaolin Temple is a different sort of trial he has to go to, has to figure yes. it out. Since these were, you know, old movies, basically, like they didn't have a lot of the special effects they do now, so a lot of the stuff the actors had to actually figure out how to do. At the beginning, when you're seeing him like running on a log across water, he actually had to figure out how to do that. Oh, really? And I remember an interview where like he gets at the end this three-section staff. Like he has to know how, like the actor, he didn't know how to use that. He had to figure it out. And he was saying he was getting hit a lot using that because it's a hard weapon to control. And... So you really have to admire like everything these actors had to go through to make these movies. And the actor in this movie is Gordon Liu, isn't it? Who, of course, he was in another raced. movie you may have seen. <laughs> Kill Bill. He's playing <laughs> Very appropriate. He was like any kung fu movie that he's in <laughs> is cool. good. Is going to be good. <laughs> It has a special meaning for me because this is actually the first kung fu movie I ever watched. It's Jet Li oh. in this. Uh, I went to the movie store, Blockbuster, and uh, I yeah, remember Blockbuster. Yeah, and I picked out a VHS from their martial arts section, and it was once I upon think a time in you China. You might need to explain what a VHS was for. Oh, it's kind of like um, it's kind of like a cassette. Yeah, it was a bit, it was about like this big, and it had two white r- rolls, and it would go into a machine, and it would it would wind. And uh, sometimes all the tape would come out of it and you'd have to wind it back in. This movie, it centers around the character uh, Wong Fei Hung, who, you know, Wong Fei Hung seems to be the main character of every martial arts movie. Like, the main character of Drunken Master also, for some reason, is Wong Fei Hung. Um, really? Yeah, yeah. So, well, it's not totally true, but, you know, Wong Fei Hung was this hero that lived around the turn of the century, the 1900s. Oh, he's real. Is a real historical character, yeah, who went on a lot of... Uh, like General Tao and his chicken. Exactly like General Tao, who was real. Well, actually, he was real. I mean, he was. He so was Tong Tang was real, but the chicken wasn't real. So this guy, he was a martial arts master and a, a Chinese doctor, and he had a load of adventures uh, around, uh, you know, around the turn of the century. Uh, so the movie, uh, it's, it's about... Uh, I forget where it's set. It's either Canton or Shanghai. I think it's Canton. But, um, you know, it centers around some of the same themes, Chinese nationalism. The most cool part for me was the intro to this movie, where you get that song. The ultimate Yeah. Song. get that shot of all those guys practicing on the beach and as a young kid a teenager this is what made me want to start practicing kung fu <laughs> so that's the main reason why i included this movie uh, it was so successful that they went on to make like loads of once upon a time in like, movies. I think like i think there were six the last one being once upon a time in china and america exactly where jet Li gets comes to america for some reason loses his memory ends up fighting with indians in and, the old west in the west yeah <laughs> about Chinese nationalism at its best. 
in a kung fu movie. Nothing beats Heroes of the East. Oh, yes. Good choice. Good choice. Basically, this uh, Chinese guy marries a Japanese woman. It was an arranged marriage. But at first, it's great. But then he realizes she's just, she's just a willful Japanese woman who thinks Japanese martial arts... <laughs> are better than Chinese martial arts. For some reason, she's a karate master, right? Oh yeah, she's like punching through walls and everything. <laughs> Anyways, they have a fight. She goes back to Japan where she uh, rekindles a little something with a, a, a former associate of hers. Okay. Um, lover. Not quite a lover because he dedicated his life to studying ninjutsu. He was a ninja, and so he never... Oh, so he's he not allowed to become her Well, he just was so focused on that, he never uh, developed a, a romantic relationship with her, and now he's kind of upset that, like, she's been married off to this Chinese guy. So basically what happens is this guy decides to take five other Japanese martial arts masters to China to challenge the husband, Gordon, who's actually played by Gordon Leo. He's in everything. And as you can imagine, this one Chinese guy, he's not even supposed to be, he's not even portrayed as like a great master of anything. He's just a pretty good kung fu guy from a rich family. But so he has to fight the masters of like each different system in Japan. There's a samurai, there's oh. a kendo guy. So it basically proves that one Chinese style is better than all of these five Japanese styles. Well, no, like against the samurai guy, he'll use the Chinese straight sword. Um, oh, I see. He uses different styles. Different styles, different styles against... Uh, but it basically English. proves that everything Chinese is better than its Japanese equivalent. Yeah, I mean, the, the, this one Chinese guy beats all of the Japanese masters. And at the end, after he's beaten everyone, he's like, oh, we shouldn't be fighting. We should appreciate that all martial arts are really <laughs> good. So my final choice, we're coming right up into the modern day now with this movie. Oh, it's, uh, let me guess, IP Man, that movie about that hacker. <laughs> yeah, um, well, it's not a movie about a hacker. It's uh, It Man, uh, and it's a movie about Bruce Lee's teacher, who is called It Man in uh, Mandarin. It's pronounced Ye Wen. And, um, so, you know, he had all these adventures and stuff, apparently. Um, and so, None of which is remotely based on anything that actually happened. <laughs> Probably to not. Man. Yeah. The, the character is real, but uh, obviously the story has some artistic. But anyway, it's Donnie Yen in this movie, who Donnie Yen is pretty much like one of the hottest uh, martial, Chinese martial arts stars. He's even going to be in right Star now. Wars. He's going to be in Star Wars. Yeah, exactly. He's playing a character in the new Star Wars movie, Rogue One, uh, that's coming out at the end of the year. Uh, so Ip Man 1 was... I'm focusing on Ip Man 1 for this because that was a really cool movie. That was the original. A lot of people loved it. But Chris, you have a special connection with It Man 2 because you were actually in the movie, weren't you? Of course. Can we get a side by side of that? Yeah, do the expression. Uh, I hate Chinese boxing. <laughs> So yes, the um, arrogant British boxer Twister, who uh, bears a striking resemblance to Chris. You know, that was a classic movie, and that fight between Twister and Donnie Yen, absolute yeah. classic. Well, my favorite thing about the, about the Ip Man series is like you have the first one where, again, the enemies are the Japanese. Mm. And so after you make that, w what can be the, the bigger villain than the hated Japanese? The British. The only thing that's worse. Imperialist Westerners. And then in the third movie, uh, it's quite cool because you have Mike Tyson uh, as the enemy. Uh, but it's interesting because he doesn't beat Mike Tyson, which I think I'm suspecting this is this was something in Mike Tyson's I contract. I haven't seen this yet. Uh, well, I'll tell you this bit. It won't spoil the movie because it's not the final battle. But anyway, uh, I suspect Mike Tyson had something in the contract that I'll be in the movie, but he's not allowed to beat me. So he has a timed fight with Mike Tyson, three uh, three minute round, you know, because Mike Tyson's a boxer, uh, and so three minutes it ends. And then Mike Tyson's like, all right, we're finished. <laughs> so they have this brutal fight in which, you know, it man, Donnie Yen, looks like he's struggling, but he puts up a pretty good fight against this bigger opponent. Uh, but then after three minutes, Tyson's like, I don't care that we've smashed up my office and 
you know, whatever. Three minutes is up, we're done. See you later, I respect you now. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really cool, and it's a really cool fight. Uh, there's another really cool fight in, in an elevator where he has to fight this other uh, Chinese guy who's one of the evil thugs, uh, you know, who's messing with him. Uh, because Wing Chun is supposed to be a very close uh, range system, so it makes sense exactly. to be a fight in an enclosed space. In a closed space. space, yes. It's all that hand techniques and uh, very small techniques. So I would thoroughly recommend all the Ip Man movies. Uh, it doesn't mean IP Man. Now for my final favorite movie. Th this is this is my favorite. Movie. Really, I love this. Okay, it's called Dirty Ho. Chris, this is a family show, dude. H O H O. Oh, you mean like a Chinese like son. a Chinese name? Dirty That's convenient Ho. that it that it, it well, it's provocative. There are very few actual Dirty Hoes in this movie. So okay. if you're looking for that kind of movie, I go suggest elsewhere. you go elsewhere. <laughs> So uh, what is it? What happened? Dirty Ho. Dirty Ho is interesting because in most of these old kung fu movies, it's always that it, are set in like the Qing Dynasty, the Manchus, basically the ruling class that conquered China. They're usually the villains. Okay. In this one, the main character is actually a Manchu prince, and it's interesting to see a Manchu portraying positive light. However, this is because this guy loves Chinese culture and wine. And he's, he travels all over China. Uh, indulging in like great wine and Chinese antiques. Um, but so anyways, this other guy starts to follow him around, kind of becomes like his helper, disciple kind of guy. But he never lets on that he knows martial arts. Meanwhile, there's like going to be a power transition within the Qing Dynasty court and being one of the princes, the other princes want to kill this guy so that he's not in the run for secession. So, but, you know, since all, since all of this is political, none of the fighting can be on the surface. Okay. So this is the most unique choreography you'll see in any kung fu movie because all of the fights are done sort of like they're not fighting. Like somebody will hand somebody a tray of tea and while doing it, like make a jab for the throat. But then like he'll pick up the cup and deflect it. So other people don't notice yeah. that they're fighting. Yeah, in fact, the, the, the guy who's following the Qing prince we'll around, down. Manchu prince around, is like all the time like looking back and like, what are they doing? So guys, those are our 10 scientifically proven uh, list of best kung fu movies. There were a few run runners up that we sort of didn't include uh, for certain reasons. Uh, of course, we have to uh, mention the movie uh, Kung Fu Hustle uh, by Zhou Xingqi. What's he called? Stephen Chow. Chow. Stephen Chow uh, and Stephen Chow's other movie, Kung Fu Soccer. Uh, they're more of comedy kung fu movies rather than a serious kung fu movie, so we didn't include them in the list. You had one that you thought was uh, oh, pretty good, didn't you? This one, well, this one would have been on my top ten favorite, but Ben wouldn't allow it. I wouldn't allow it. Wendy Wu, Homecoming Warrior. Everything I do, she has to do. Thanks a lot. Well, this one's mine. Nobody's gonna give her my vote for a stale cookie. Even your brother? He's got my vote. Peter, put that down! Okay, so we don't, we're only allowing movies that were actually made by Chinese companies. This one was Disney, but you can check it out. It's on Netflix. And <laughs> it's really, it's, I recommend it wholeheartedly. <laughs> Um, I have actually seen this. Movie. I I have actually seen it. It is very good. Uh, and then there's of course Ong Bak, which uh, is from Thailand, right? Thai? Is it Thai? I don't know. Anyway, it's not from China. So uh, it's a really really cool movie. I'd thoroughly recommend watching it. But we were just focusing on Chinese kung fu movies in this list, uh, so we I didn't include seen it. it. I can't. Oh, you should check it out. It's really good. Really good. And the raid, which is one you were talking about. Yeah, we gotta we gotta mention the raid. The raid is uh, you know a fairly recent uh, movie. And it just has really intense martial arts. Mm. I know, um, but it's not Chinese, right? It's, it's not Chinese. Uh, oh. well, I forget. Okay. Anyways, Robert Ebert hated it because it was just who, who fighting. Hated it? Robert Ebert. Ebert. Who's you know, that? Like Siskel and Ebert. Oh, a famous know. film critic. Anyways, oh. he's like, it's all fighting. 
and stupid. Well, that's There's what, no a, doctor, that's what a kung like, fu movie it's, is, isn't it? It's a spaghetti it's western. A, basically. Yeah. Okay, guys, so thanks for watching. And if you have any ideas about those movies, or there are any we've missed, I'm sure there are, you can leave them in the comments below. No, those were the 10. Those were the 10. Yeah, so leave them in the comments, and then we'll just, we'll just blast you. What You'll would 10 to 20 everyone. be? That could be happening. Yeah. What would the, the lower 10 yeah. uh, in the top 20? So do go and check out Chris's yeah. channel, China Uncensored. What do you post on there, Chris? Oh, I, I post hilarious oh. things about China news and politics. It's like The Daily Show, but just about China. Is it daily? It's not daily. It's three times a three week. Three times so a week. Monday, do check it out. Friday. China Uncensored on YouTube. Uh, new episodes three times a week. As always, subscribe yeah. to Only in Asia if you're new. Give this video a like, thumbs up, comment below, and we'll see you next time with more awesome stuff that happens only in Asia.